Hi, you guys. It's Steph talking with you again from my heart. <sighs> I'd like to talk about, um, as a Christian lady, uh, about Roe v. Wade. Okay. I think if, um, if any, if I was going to get any, any hate from people, it would be on this video because it's so controversial and everybody has her own, um, opinion. And that's right. I said, everybody has her own opinion. <laughs> okay. Cause one of my opinions is, um, I don't think, um, men should have as much to st say as they do about abortion. I just, that's just me. Okay. I'm a Christian woman. I believe things that are written in the Bible. I believe things that Jesus has taught us about things being that are written in the Bible. Um, you might find that idiotic. I don't know. Um, but, um, this is what I believe. I believe that, um, choice starts in the bedroom. I believe the time to choose whether you want to be pregnant or not is before you lay down with your man. Okay. That's my opinion. Um, but being, being, that being said, okay. I think that, um, there's exceptions to rules. And I do not believe that abortion should be a form of birth control. I don't think it's fair to the unborn child. You go out. I'm going to get my drunk on. It's Friday night. And I go and I get my drunk on. and Or I get my drugs on or whatever I'm doing. And I lay down with this man that I barely know. And I make a child with this man. And now, whoopsie. No, I don't think that's right. I don't think it's right to basically use abortion like birth control. That's what birth control is for. That's what condoms are. Because first of all, we're supposed to be using condoms anyway. Because um, HIV AIDS is still a thing, okay? Just because people are sidetracked with COVID doesn't mean that it's still not a thing, okay? So that's first thing. So let's first of all, let's start using condoms again and let's use birth control. If you're going to have um, sex outside of marriage, then let's be smart about it. Let's have some common sense, first of all. Okay, but even as a Christian woman, I have recognized that there are times when that there are times when um, it's necessary. Um, what do they call it? E etopic pregnancies? Okay. It's like that's where instead of the the fetus or the embryo attaching itself in the uterine wall, it attaches itself in the ovary or in the duct. That can kill a person. That she can literally die from that. And there's other things that like happen later on in pregnancy. And even Michelle Duggar herself, when she had little Josie, I think she had um really, really, really over the top, like high blood pressure, you know, and they had to take Josie early and thank God she survived it. But I don't know how far Michelle was. She wasn't, she wasn't full term when they took Josie. And so they took Josie and they put her on, you know, their special machines and thank God she survived it. Okay. She had a lot of people praying for her and she survived, she survived that ordeal. But um, yeah, Michelle Duggar, if you don't know who she is, she's a woman who's basically famous for having 19 children. And, um, so she had all these children and Josie, who is now, gosh, 12 or 13 years old now, but she was their last baby and she had to come early and that pregnancy, she was induced, that labor was induced because her, um, her high blood, her blood, her blood pressure, excuse me, her blood pressure was just so high that, you know, you know, again, so now if, if little Josie hadn't survived that, would that, that have been considered an abortion? I don't know, you know, but anyway, there's times, there's absolutely times when the mother's life has to come first. And 
but as a Christian person, it's like, it's, it's hard for me, like, um, you know, like wanting to be obedient to the word of God and what the Lord would want. And, but also like in my own life. Okay. Um, I've had, well, five pregnancies and, uh, I lost two children to, um, to, you know, while, you know, in utero and, um, but, but I've, I've, uh, I don't know. It's like getting, it's like personal, you know, but like my first son, his, his father, you know, we weren't married and he had no, he had no use for me. He really, well, he had a use for me, but, <laughs> you know, was, you know, a use of me, not really a use for me, but anyway, and then my second son, um, he was, he was, um, when I went to my four week, um, no, I'm sorry, four month ultrasound, they said, um, you know, she, she, you know, how they're looking around and normally they say, oh, here's his little, here's his little heart and here's his little, you know, his, his little arms and his legs. And she didn't do that. Uh, the technician didn't do that with, with my second son. He, um, she looked and she was looking and she wasn't making these little cute little noises. And she said, I'll be right back. I got to get the doctor. And, um, so she gets the doctor and the doctor's looking and looking and looking. And he says to me, this baby has no kidneys. And, and I said, well, what does that mean? He's like, you really should abort this baby. I said, I'm not aborting my baby. What are you crazy? Because remember, you know, Christian, Christian lady here, Christian ladies don't abort their babies. Okay. We barely use birth control. All right. And especially, um, I'm not a fundamentalist, but if you're, uh, if you're a fundamentalist or if you're a Baptist, like no birth control and all right. So said, I'm not, I'm not aborting my baby. And he said, um, well, here's the thing. He's like, you have about a month to decide what you want to do. He's like, but this baby has no kidneys. It's going to be a very painful death for this baby. And you need to make a decision. So I went home after the doctor's appointment. And, uh, I told my very wonderful, very beautiful Catholic mother-in-law. And, um, and she said to me, that's a lie straight from the devil. She said, and she said, this is what we're going to do. She said, they said, you have a month. And I said, yeah. She said, well, I'm going to pray every night for a month. And believe me, she said, that baby will have kidneys. So I said, okay. Then the month came and went and I had another appointment and that baby had kidneys. And he grew up and I had that, that young man for 28 years before he died as something else. But anyway, then my third baby, um, I won't even get into how she was conceived. Um, but it wasn't how I would have liked her to have been conceived. So basically what I'm saying is every excuse that a woman can come up with, I need to have an abortion. I went through it <laughs> with all three of my living children. I went through, I went through that. I went through having, oh, that, that jerk that he doesn't really love me. And I went through, I have, there's something wrong with my baby. And I went through, um, I conceived a child in a way that shouldn't have been. Okay. I went through all those reasons, but 
I can tell you that I can tell you every day that I'm glad that I had those children. But anyway, um, I think I digress. That's just been my personal experience. But there was a time when I thought of myself more of a pro-choice kind of person. I guess because I was always the mother, you know, in this situation. I was always, well, it's my body and I should be able to decide what I'm going to do. And then um, my son, my oldest son, the one whose dad is, you know, the jerk, <laughs> um, he had his first baby, my first born grandson. And then I was like, oh my gosh, who could ever even, why, you know, could anybody ever think of, you know, doing this and taking away a, a grandbaby from a grandma? Oh my goodness. And then my, my, my thoughts kind of shifted, even though I was like, I thought of myself as a Christian the whole time. So it's, it's weird because it's like when you're the mother carrying the child, you know, you don't necessarily always want to carry the child, but then you do, and then you're glad that you did. Um, now, as far as late-term abortion, oh my gosh. Late-term abortion, if there's such a thing for convenience sake, don't even want it. I don't even want to talk about that, because to me, that's just ugly. It's just ugly. I've talked to young women who've had abortions in first trimester, and even they say, that's just, no, no, we're not doing that. Um, but some people need to have a late term abortion for the health of the mother, they say. Okay. The, you know, the, and it's like, it's such a, it's such a hard thing because it's like, in my heart, it's like, oh, not my grandbaby. Oh no. Cause now we have, we have eight grandkids now. And the oldest one is, now I believe this that I'm saying he's 18 years old. Oh my gosh, right? And then the little one, she's a little tiny boopy, little baby. She's a couple months old. She's three months old. You know, she's just a little girl. And, um, but, um, and then we have every age in between. And, but it's like, so as the heart of a grandmother, but not the woman carrying the child, it's like, oh no, please don't ever. Oh, don't ever, I hope you never have to do that to one of my grandbabies. Oh my God. But as the mother, I was like, well, if I needed to do that, I guess I would have to do that and blah, 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 blah. But I don't want to do that. And I was like, you know, I don't know. And then you watch videos, horrible videos of, you know, and I guess they're meant to, um, to make you feel bad. I guess they're they're designed to make you feel guilty or bad or whatever. And um but then as a Christian lady too, it's like Jesus said don't be either 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 be hot or cold, but never be in the middle. Okay? Cuz if you're on a fence, I'll spit you out of my mouth. So, okay. Well, I don't want Jesus to spit me out of his mouth. So, I have to pick one side or the other, I'm going to have to be pro-life. That's just the way it is. All right. So, meanwhile, it's the midterm elections are coming up, and I live in Pennsylvania. And there's this fella called Doug, let me see, I wrote it down here, Doug Mastriano? Yeah, Doug Mastriano. And he said that, my body, my choice is ridiculous nonsense. And the reason why he's saying that is because he's extreme right. I'm guessing he got that from the Bible. Because, you know, the Bible says that our bodies don't belong to us. Our bodies, you know, um, belong to God. And, and it also says a woman's body doesn't belong to herself but to her husband. And a husband's body doesn't belong to his self, but to his wife. Okay. So, so essentially, I think that's what, how he's looking at it. Like 
our bodies don't really belong to us. They're on loan to us, you know? So, um, but then you get into a, a whole church and state thing. Okay. And so I, I don't agree. I don't agree. First of all, I don't agree with it. Ridiculous nonsense, because then you're saying to a woman, what you're, what you're thinking, what you're saying, what you're thinking in your heart and your head and all and this decision you're trying to make, it's nonsense. It's not what you're going through, woman, is it's nonsense right now. And it's not nonsense because there's a lot of babies that get aborted, not because of a drunken one night stand fling, but because there was no choice because the mother was going to stroke out or whatever. You know, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And it's like, I just know in my heart, it's like, I don't feel like it's right to do. But at the same time, if a doctor feels like this woman needs to have this done because she's going to die, she should have a safe and legal way to do it, I guess. You know, I don't know. I just... It's, it's hard for me to say, but like, but like I said, as a Christian woman and as a woman who says I am pro-life, you know, but also I'll tell you something else about being pro-life. Okay. I don't think that you can call yourself pro-life, but then stand outside of a prison at midnight with signs and saying, burn baby, burn, hoping for somebody to be executed. Okay. I don't think you can be pro-life and um, wish for gay people to dis like disappear off the face of the earth and them all get killed or something like that. I don't think you can be pro-life. And so when I say pro-life, I mean all life. I mean, I feel like everyone should have a right to live. I feel like that there shouldn't be capital punishment. I know a lot of people who claim to be pro-life, but they're more than happy to say that, um, murderers should get the death penalty. Well, how do you, how do you reconcile that? How do you say I'm pro-life and all life is precious, but put this guy in the electric chair or whatever, you know, lethal inject injection, whatever they do, you know, um, how can you say that you're pro-life when you wish that drug addicts would just, you know, you call them scumbags and you just wish they would all die? How do you call yourself pro-life? I don't get it. So when I say pro-life, I mean everyone, not just the fetus, but everyone has a right to life. Everyone. The, the fetus. Or how do you call yourself uh pro-life when there's children that are born that are being mistreated or, you know, or like living in Philadelphia. Well, we don't really live. We live on the outskirts of Philadelphia, but every, every night on the news, every night people are getting shot all the time, all the time. But it's like, and it's so getting so bad here that it made national news. That that's how unsafe Philadelphia is. It's like the fifth in the nation or something. I don't know. So how do you call yourself pro-life and then you have people killing each other in the streets over sneakers or over a car or over some sort of other material possession or just because uh, this is our side of the street and that's your side of the street. You crossed over and I hate you for it. So now you got to pay the price. So now I'm going to, I'm going to shoot you now. I'm going to kill you. And then little kids getting caught in the crossfire. And we had an incident just a year ago. And I'll never forget when it was because it actually happened on my birthday, August 27th. A sweet little girl got caught in a crossfire. A couple of idiots started shooting at a football game. You're supposed to be there watching football against um, the town here. And interestingly enough, my old alma mater, okay, on my birthday, 
luckily I didn't know that they my old mama monitor was in town. I might have gone to see it. I might have even been at the play, the thing, you know. But this, just these idiots start shooting. The police start shooting back, and this sweet little girl she gets caught in a crossfire. And now the family they have no answers. Like they gave her some sort of report. The, in the township gave her a report, but they blacked out a lot of the a lot of the words. And it's like, that's not doing the family any good, you know. But how do you say that you're, you're, you're pro life, but then this little girl gets shot? Like you can't. It's like either all life is precious, or none of none of it is, you know. And it's like, so it's so, so when I say that I'm pro life, I mean I'm pro life as far as you know, everything. Everybody has a right. To a life. Everybody has a right, whether you're, you know, and you know, an infant, or whether you're, you know, or you know, you're um, a fetus, you're an infant, you're a small little girl, um, or you're a person, you're a person who did bad things and had to go to prison. Everybody has a right to life. But then again, <laughs> I'm the type of person where I will. I catch and release a bug, so you know, um, whatever. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm silly. I don't know. Thinking, uh, oh, what's wrong with her? Everybody has a right to life, you know. But that's what I mean when I say I am a right to life person, not just a fetus, but I believe everybody, everybody, whether you like that person or not, you know, whether you think there's some use for them or not. Because all I I know is, it's like. Um, they say, you feel this, you have a heartbeat, you still have a purpose. You have a purpose to life. God gave us all a purpose. So that's why I don't believe, like even criminals, I believe that they have a right to life. And the, the executioner has doesn't even have the right to take that life. I feel like the only person that has the right to take the life is God. So whether they're an innocent baby or a criminal or anywhere in between, that the only person that has the right to take your breath away from you is God Almighty. So I guess maybe that's really what makes me, you know, pro-life. But the abortion issue is, um, it's tough. You know, it's really tough. And I have nothing but love. For anybody who's listening to this video, if you found yourself in a situation where you've had to have an abortion, um, I'm very sad that that you needed to do that. But there's no judgment. There's no judgment from me anyway. Not from this heart right here. There's, there never will be any judgment. And, and Doug Mastriano, he won't be getting my vote. Because I think just by him using the phrase ridiculous nonsense is um it's just so like dare I say misogynistic. It's like how you how you feel doesn't mean anything to me. Like what you're thinking. It it could be anything like like, honey, I wanna get new drapes. That's ridiculous nonsense. Because you're a woman. You own a vagina, so it's ridiculous nonsense. Oh, honey, I, I think I'd like to buy a new dress. That's ridiculous nonsense. It's kind of like he grouped it in with th that kind of stuff, you know. And the, so I really don't know who I'm going to vote for. I just know it won't be him, you know, because I don't agree. I don't agree that it's ridiculous nonsense. I think it's something that takes a lot of thought. And it takes a lot of, you know, sleepless nights and, and calling it ridiculous is just, I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, well, this, 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 this kind of, this, this video just ran on, didn't it? But, um, so anyway, um, I'll talk to you again and, uh, I'll pray for y'all. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye.